Looks like we're rolling. We're here with David J, formerly of Bauhaus, House, and uh, he was doing a uh, interview with Reviewer TV, very graciously. Cheers. Cheers to uh, your new book. You know, that's uh, quite an accomplishment. It's a big sick tome too, and it's a memoir of uh, your days in Bauhaus. Or does it go back farther? Does it go after it? What? Tell me about. Tell me about the, uh, the it overall. It goes back right back to the, the time when I met Daniel Ash my former partner in crime, which is way back to uh, the early 60s, because we were at kindergarten together, and uh, we didn't realize that until we met up again when we were both attending art school in Northampton, and we got into conversation and realized that we were actually in a little group shaking tambourines and wood blocks when we were under five. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting... Uh, Revelation. So it starts there, and then it tells the whole story of Bauhaus right up until the end, which was in 2006. And uh, it, it, on the cover it says, uh, Bauhaus Black Magic and Benediction. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the song Bella Lugosi is Dead is kind of credited with starting the goth music in America, from what I've heard. And uh, can you elaborate on that? Did that... Was that an intentional thing on your part, or did that kind of surprise you? Not at all. I mean, we, no. I mean, we just that song just it just bubbled up like the best songs do, and um, the 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 mantle of goth gothic was laid upon us. You know, we didn't intend to be gothic, and uh, in fact, you know, it was ra it was a rather limiting. Uh, label because the band was much more expansive than that and was always evolving so it became a bit of a, a limiting uh, name and uh, I really believe that we, we we transcended the gothic although there was a, obviously a gothic element there and sometimes we would play with that and have a bit of fun with it sometimes we would um, take it quite seriously but then you can't take goth too seriously can't be a serious. Can't be too serious as a vampire. Um, there was always a bit of a the tongue in the cheek action going on with that. Absolutely. House. Sometimes it went over people's heads, you know, and they thought we were being serious when we weren't. Um, but there you go. Well, you're here in sunny San Diego, which doesn't seem like the most conducive uh, environment to dark, gothy kind of uh, uh, culture. But you've been here a long time, from what I know. You've lived here a long time. You have your family here. Yeah, right? I've been here 18 years now. It's a long time. Yeah. Lucadia, right by the beach? Yeah, and, uh, I've sort of made a transit around this whole area. Encinitas, Cardiff, Lucadia, Carlsbad. Um, I think it's a very special place. It's, uh, I'm sure there's some ley line energy going on. What line? Yeah, ley, ley line? Lines, you know, oh, with the... Uh, there's some, there's some, some special energy going on here. Some kind huh. of uh, like uh, spiritual vortex really uh, power spot can you give me an example of that can you elaborate on that well, I think it's exemplified by the uh, self-realization fellowship oh swamis swamis Paramahansa I mean, Yogananda the fact that, that uh, Paramahansa Yogananda had the vision of this place and then came here yeah, he came here early on yeah and um, I had a an interesting uh, an encounter with with the yogi when I first discovered the uh, the self realization fellowship. I didn't know anything about it. I'm actually going to tell this story tonight, um, but it's in the book. Okay. Yeah. Can you talk to Reviewer TV? Well, um, it was when I first arrived here, and I was out for a Sunday drive with the missus, and we were driving down the 101, and we saw the interesting building that sits proudly up there on the bluff. The temple. The temple. And uh, just in decided to investigate, and uh, it was open, and uh, we looked around the gardens, which were splendid, and also the the little building at the top where Paramahansa Yogananda lived, and and in fact, as I found out later, wrote his book. <coughs> it's the same place. So, um, what year was this? This would have been 1999. And um, so we just went in there, just casually, you know, looking around. And I was 
I was intrigued by all the Indian instruments that they had on display. And also I saw the photograph, well, the, the painting, which is based on a photograph of, of the yogi, and was really transfixed by that image. Very soulful countenance. And then I went up the little steps and stood at the threshold of his office, his study, where he wrote the book, and I became overwhelmed with this feeling of spiritual elation and ecstasy. It was completely straight. Yeah. And uh, to such a degree that my, my legs gave way. And uh, I just felt enveloped by a feeling of absolute peace, serenity and love. And I saw this golden pinkish light emanating from the room and I was just gobsmacked and uh, my soul was struck and I had to be one of the sisters gently tugged me on the on the shoulder because there was a, a little line for me who people wanted to look into the study so I just sort of in a dazed state meandered back into the outside into the gardens and Hmm. I told my wife what I'd just experienced. And she'd just been reading this uh, little pamphlet she picked up on the way in, which I had not seen. And there was a story in there which was very similar. Interestingly enough, it was from a, a testament from a, uh, an English lady who had a very similar experience. So I thought, well, there's something going on here, because that was just out of the blue, you know, hmm. like a lightning bolt. So I decided to pick up his, his uh, biography there and read it straight away and I, I was really charmed by his sense of humour when I was quite surprised by that because it's quite cheeky uh, and uh, ever since then I felt really blessed to have discovered uh, Paramahansa Yoga and having him on my side, having him in my corner so, Quite uh, else? Uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was it was quite an experience How spiritual Yeah, and, Deep, uh, deeply, yeah it came on you like a, a, a uh, almost like a, a muse or, or a spirit a spirit coming on you kind of yeah it was something of an epiphany what about uh, has, has that um, ever been like the songwriting experience for you I mean who t can you tell me about when you wrote Bela Lugosi is Dead was it inspired by movies was it inspired by a book what, tell, tell me about tell us about a conversation okay. that I had with Daniel and at the time in England, they'd been showing a, uh, all, the, all the old vampire films. It was a season of vampire films. So we'd both been enjoying that. We were just on, on the phone, just arranging to go, uh, go to our rehearsal. And we were talking about these films. And the, the one that had just been on was Bela Lugosi, the classic uh, Dracula. So that was in my consciousness when I was riding home on my bicycle from my boring warehouse job the next day in Northampton in Northampton and I was struck by this idea of Bella Lugosi and Bella, Bella Lugosi personifying the elegant vampire figure and felt he was dead but in the guise of a vampire of course he, he remains undead so and in Hollywood was, he'll never die in, in, in Hollywood celluloid quite and so um I just started writing these lyrics down on the packing labels that I would attach to the boxes that I would send out. And by the time I got home, I had the whole thing written out on the labels. Hmm. And then transcribed it, gave it to Peter the next night at rehearsal. And we all just started playing our separate parts. I wrote the lyrics, but we all contributed. That was very much a four-way collaboration, that song. But we didn't plan it or anything. We just started playing what basically what you hear on the record. Hmm. And uh, Peter did that, the, the vocal, pretty much as you hear on the record, as if we'd been doing that song for a long time. One take? And we were kind of... Well, when we, when we went into the studio, it was one take, yeah. Huh. All playing live. But I'm talking about the very first time we played it in the rehearsal room, when we, we were writing it. Yeah. It was just... It just flowed very naturally. And that was our first group collaborative song about what year was this about how old were you 1978 so we would be in like 21 okay my so brother was 19 yeah absolutely so tonight you're going to uh 
read from the book, or are you just going to sign the book? You can I'm going to answer questions. Selections from the book, yeah. Um, uh, Here at Ducky Walls Emporium in beautiful downtown Lucadia. Exactly, and uh, I'm actually going to tell the the tales that I've just told you um, because they're they pertinent to this locale. Nice. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, talk to us about uh, your new book, Who Killed Mr. Moonlight, and it's available uh, on the internet. But what is the publisher that uh, did it for, that p- printed it for Jawbone you? Jawbone Press in London. I'm just about to go out to to London and then to carry on through Europe on a book promotional tour. When will that start? Right it's, away. Um, when I go to Canada next week, and then New York, and then I go to London, and then I'm out there for about four weeks. Woohoo! And, uh, and people can, can uh, expect to uh, see you at some bookstores in London or in Europe? Yes, yes. I'm also doing living room shows, which I've been doing of late, where I go to... Sometimes it's actually a living room, but sometimes it's just a... It's a it can be a, anywhere that the host, who's just anybody who wants to come on board and, and, uh, and book one of these shows, they, they host the events. And so I played in all sorts of places just use chapels to warehouses to art galleries as well as living rooms so we're tying those in and there's a couple of club dates as well but it's all based around the book so I'll be combining readings with live music you can be playing tonight? not tonight no tonight's just a reading okay and if people want to uh, send you an email you, they can go through your website which is? yeah it's davidjonline.com any dash in there? Just all, all uh, one word? Yes. David G. Online? Yes. Right on. Yeah. There's also a band camp. And if the best place to get the book really online is Amazon. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon, the great uh, bookstore love that all the bookstore owners love. <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, well, what can you do, right? It's yeah, worldwide. Yeah, I mean, I, I, whenever I can, I support the independent stores like Duckies, you know. Absolutely. And I'm doing independent stores on the European tour. So um, that's all very, very good. When you go out, David J, uh, today to your favorite clubs, what are what are some of your favorite clubs right now? I know that uh, a lot of come and gone of San Diego. I saw you at uh, the Casbah the other night to see a London band, uh, Fat White Family, and and yeah, uh, I you... love the the Casbah is my second home, and it always has been since I've been coming here. Um, I like the Belly Up, and uh, especially these days, where they have a very good booker, so they're getting some great bands. Who's really the booker? Good, really good at acts there, Chad. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I may be doing a show there with my band later in the year. I have a full band, The Gentleman Thieves. Um, so that's another another avenue. Any, anything up in L.A. you'd like to mention? I, I saw you up in L.A. one time uh, years ago when they were doing a Suicide Girl show up there one time. Oh, that is, I think you were DJing, weren't you? That is quite a, a time ago. Yes, I was DJing. It's like 15 years ago. I think so. Maybe well, maybe it was maybe it was right after 9/11. I don't know. Yeah, the years all blurred well, I just, together. I did, du- I did um, book soup up there. Okay. Um, I may have a show again with the band there, and maybe some living there's some living room shows that are pending in LA. In LA. Yes. And uh, would that be something that people can find about, out about yeah, online and get an invitation to go to? Yeah, it'll be uh, posted up on my site. Nice. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you again. Is there anything you'd like to uh, to mention to uh, our... I think we've covered it all pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you from our watchers at uh, Revere TV. David J., looking forward to hearing you uh, talk about the book.